Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're meeting the charismatic Greenland dog. The Greenland dog originates from the coastal area of the Arctic regions of northern Siberia, Alaska, Canada and Greenland, and is one of the oldest breeds in the world. Remains have been found in the New Siberian Islands that have been carbon dated to around 9,000 years old. It is known that the dog first reached Greenland with the Sarkak people around 4,000 to 5,000 years ago. It is genetically identical to the Canadian Eskimo dog, and in 2015, a study using a number of genetic markers indicated that the Greenland dog and the Canadian Eskimo, aka Inuit dog, were both the same and should not be treated as separate breeds, and that they were also distinct from Siberian Huskies, Alaskan Huskies and Malamutes. Today, the breed is considered as nationally and culturally important to Greenland, and efforts are made to safeguard its purity as the population has been falling due to the use of sledmobiles instead. A number of projects have been initiated in an attempt of ensuring that Greenland's dog sledding culture, knowledge and use, along with the breed itself, are not lost. As the earliest Europeans to settle in Greenland, the Vikings were first to become aware of these dogs, learning dog sledding skills from Arctic natives. Today, I'm visiting sled dog champion Matthew Hodgson of Infury Sled Dogs, who is lucky enough to own two beautiful Greenland dogs. I'm so excited as I haven't met one of these breeds before, and I've been promised a day of sledding and crazy dog affection. <laughs> Hello! Hi, Annika, nice Hi, to see I'm you. Matt. You doing? Yeah, very good. Come in. You oh, want to meet some Greenland dogs, I believe. Yeah, it's an absolute storm out there, yeah, so it seems to be weather. appropriate Arctic weather to meet some dogs from colder climes today. Well, cold, I'm not so sure they're used to the wet, but let me go and no. get them. Here they come. <laughs> Hi! Oh my God, look at them! <laughs> wow! Rebunctious or what? Rebunctious! <laughs> What's this one called? His name's Lux. Lux. Short for Luxuria. <laughs> Hello, Lux. And this is his sister Ava, short for Ava. Avaris. She's so much tinier than yes. he is. Look at this little girl, she's so pretty. As the weather was briefly clearing in between rainstorms, we decided to get straight out into a beautiful woodland area close to the sea in Hastings to run these powerful dogs. Matthew parked up and started to set up the small single person bike rig, which looked extremely light frame and wobbly. To be quite honest, I was a bit worried that two powerful dogs wouldn't just simply pull it off into the distance with me dragging on the ground behind. His black male really looked powerful, and I could see him lifting the bike up into the air. We've just got Lux on his own because yes. he's pretty powerful. He is. And he's feeling it today. Yes. So um, what do I need to do? Right, so you've got two brakes. One controls each back brake. Um, you steer like a mountain bike with the front wheel. Um, to go is to hike. And to go past something is on by. On by. Steady is to slow down. Um, not that he often listens to that. <laughs> And uh, G is right, Hor is left, and when you want to go, you're just going to pull that okay. and release the panic snap. And then he'll go. For my first time, we decided to just take one dog for now. The dogs <gasps> took off and almost immediately I swerved into a ditch. Ah! No, 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 no! 
Despite previously running Malamutes and Huskies, this track was a lot harder than it looks, I can assure you, with its bends and slopes. Ah! Woo! But I got back on and tried again. Eventually, I got the hang of it and gently guided our dog back to the start of the run. Well, the Greenland dogs definitely go very, very fast, <laughs> actually quite powerful. Um, so after the Huskies, I would say these guys are probably the second fastest I've been on, but there's still more to come, so we will see. Rain was predicted, so we headed back to base to chat about the breed. Why well, he's so big, he's so muscular. I can see why they would make such amazing sled dogs. Look at this head as well, it's huge. Yes, yeah, so and they're very compact. There's a lot of power behind that for the yes. size dog. And they come in all sorts of shapes, sizes and everything because they're basically a, um, a village dog. There's a difference between a breed and what these really are is a land race. And a land race is a, a type of dog that evolved alongside the people. The so dogs are called Kimmick by the Inuit people in the Inuit dialect. And it just literally translates as dog. Mm -hmm. because they only had one type of dog. The only type of dog there was survived in the Arctic. So from village to village <laughs> and from area to area, they'd vary to a degree, but they'd all be this big husky type dog. We created the breed out of those and called it the Greenland dog. But even within Greenland, different areas, they look very different. So they can come in a variety of colours. Yeah. You can have longer coats, shorter coats, bigger, smaller. There's yes. quite a lot of variation. How common is a Greenland dog in the United Kingdom? Not very common at all. I think there's about 17. 17, so actually pretty rare. They're a working dog. They can be a great pet if you work them. I yeah. mean, these are my pet dogs, but also I compete. We go racing, we go on adventures, we do all sorts of things. So you have to be active. You have to be prepared to put the time in. Yeah. They're not a dog that's going to be happy being left. They want the stimulation. They don't do well on their own. They're a pack dog. Are these the type of dogs that you should sort of keep them in a crate when you're not around because they can get destructive? Or if I exercise them thoroughly, would they be okay to be left? So mine are fine to be left. In that respect, I don't think they're any different to any other dog. Mm. If you leave a dog bored and don't give it good things to occupy itself, it will be destructive. They need to have time given to them and devoted yeah. to them, and they need to be taught the manners from a puppy. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, they're very much like a conventional dog. The differences are you're not going to be able to go to the park and just let them off the lead. Because they'll run away, will they? Just Not like... so much that, they'll just run amok. <laughs> they're not like the Siberians that will take flight. These will come back sometimes. Yeah. It's just when they do choose to. What would be a typical naughty thing they might oh, go no, and no, do? No, they might be in the middle of the duck pond trying to get on the island catching the ducks. <laughs> they might just run through someone's picnic and smash it to pieces. The biggest problem they have is very often they don't understand pet dogs or if you like sort of the European dogs. When the Arctic dogs split off from the more domesticated breeds, they believe it could be anywhere between 10 and 30,000 years ago they split. And so these dogs stayed up in the high Arctic and they came across on a separate lineage. Yeah. So most European dogs more evolved to deal with everyday city life and these aren't. Before sled were invented, all Arctic dogs were hunting dogs. So for a long time, they were used just as hunting animals. They were used for separating a, a musk ox herd and, separating out an animal so the hunters could go in and get it with the yeah. spears or holding a polar bear at bay or pointing out where seal holes were. So the dogs have always been hunting dogs and they're still used like that today in Greenland. So when they invented the sledding, the dog probably changed slightly to become stronger and more muscular mm -hmm. to pull sleds. But fundamentally, they're still a hunting dog. Mm -hmm. And that's what people forget, that that's why yeah. they'll take off and hunt. So when these dogs were first introduced to Greenland with the very yeah. first settlers, would they sleep inside with the families or would they stay outside? They absolutely would stay outside. And so yeah. they'd be left loose. They'd live in their own loose pack around the village and then they just pull them together to harness them up or use them. When they're outside in the snow, do they dig down in the snow a little bit like huskies? Yeah, they'll make a little bed in the snow. In Greenland, it drops down to minus 50, minus 60, and they'll sleep out. They can take as low a temperature as any That's dog. That's amazing, yeah. These two have got relatively short coat, but they're in a climate that doesn't require the coat. People get confused with the coat lengths because dogs over generations will start to lose coat as they're not yeah. in the Arctic Circle or up in the cold. Yeah. So if you took these dogs up within a few months, you get thicker undercoat yeah. and uh, a longer top coat. Yeah, the, the, the top coat looks very waterproof to me. It is. What is the life expectancy of a dog like this? Probably 12 to 14 years. I mean, I've just come back from Slovakia. There's 12 year old Greenland dogs still running in harness. So that gives you an idea of the health of them. We can see that your male is a lot bigger than your female. 
What does he weigh compared to her? So he weighs 30 kilos and she weighs 25. Yes. So there's a five kilo difference, the same age. What sort of food do they like to eat? I tend to feed uh, a mixture of kibble and quite a lot of steak. As highly competitive dogs, yeah. good quality proteins, yes. quite critical. Yeah. I try to vary diet as much as possible because naturally dogs would have a very varied diet. Yeah. So if you could sum up the character of this dog in a few words, what would you sum it up as? Friendly, gregarious and extremely energetic. My conclusion to this breed was that they were super affectionate and adorable. Typical sled dogs would lick a burglar to death, but also powerful at pulling sleds and very energetic. So someone with a super active lifestyle and not fussy about potential fur and destructive behavior inside the house should be the only type of person to keep one, or you will have a very frustrated dog. One thing is for sure, they absolutely love their cuddles. Well, thank you so much for showing me your amazing um, Greenland dogs. Uh, this is the first time I've ever met them. I think they're beautiful, vivacious, as you said, energetic, a little bit crazy, but absolutely beautiful and charismatic. I, I think they're fantastic, wonderful dogs. And if people would like to find out more about them, what's your website, Matt? It's um, best place to look is on Facebook or Instagram. It's In Fury Sled Dogs. I'm very happy to help anyone. All right. Got the questions. Well, there you go. You can. I'll put the address underneath so you can also find his social media pages if you want to find out more about these really sweet, lovely dogs. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And be sure to tune in every week where I'll be bringing you more episodes on dogs, wolves, wildlife, and conservation. Bye for now. <laughs>